let's come last talk of today's session uh, Camilo Angulo, uh, Santa Cruz of the University of Fluminense in Brazil and he will be talking about gray stability for contact groupoids. Thank you. Can you hear me well? Uh, yes. Okay, so first of all, I want to thank the organizers, not only for giving me the opportunity to um, speak here today, but also for what has turned out to be a lovely school and conference so far, uh, and in spite of the obvious. Um, what I want to share today are the main ideas of this ongoing project with uh, Maria Amelia Salazar and Daniele Seppe, who are based at the University Federal Fluminense, though presently at home. Um, so let me get right into it. <clears throat> this, this project uh, is uh, somewhat born out of a now old and forgotten uh, strategy for quantization that was conceived of and developed by uh, apparently independently uh, Karasev, Alan Weinstein, and Kravetsky uh, during the late 1980s. And it, it consists of starting out with a Poisson manifold uh, on the classical side, and then building symplectic groupoids and uh, quantizing those to get now commutative algebras. And I'm deliberately being vague in this last step because one can uh, try and do so either by, uh, if you're so lucky as to have uh, an integral symplectic form and an even more miraculous polarization, uh, doing so by geometric quantization, or you can also uh, take the C star um, convolution algebra, <laughs> the convolution C star algebra. And in either case, I will be uh, choosing the geo in geo quant, and I will be focusing uh, essentially on this arrow here. Um, so, right off the bat, uh, though Francis already mentioned it so that we are all on the same page. Let me recall that a Lie groupoid uh, is, is more category of its morphisms are invertible. As such, it consists of a space of um, objects, a space of arrows, um, uh, two maps that tells you where arrows come from and where they go to, uh, partially defined multiplication that allows you to multiply uh, arrows when their heads and tails match, and then a unit for each point, and finally, an inverse uh, for each arrow. And, and it turns out, uh, I'm sorry, and, and, and we say that the Lie groupoid is, is the groupoid is Lie, essentially if, if this uh, diagram happens in the category of smooth manifolds and smooth maps. And well, the additional hypothesis is that the source and target maps uh, be submersions so that the space of composable arrows here is naturally a manifold. Now, Lie groupoids have got infinitesimal counterparts that have been also mentioned here today. Uh, those are Lie algebraids, and they resemble and in fact generalize Lie algebras. Um, but the, the fact that we are replacing here the space of units by a manifold uh, will suggest that, that uh, in the Lie algebraid, uh, the, the zero of the vector space is going to be replaced by a manifold as well. And that is formally saying that the Lie algebraid is um, a vector space, uh, a vector bundle, sorry, together with a vector bundle map to the tangent bundle. Um, that is called the anchor and a Lie algebra on its space of sections that satisfies this uh, Leibniz type rule. And I won't go into the details as to how you build a Lie algebra uh, out of a Lie given Lie group point, but you can think of um, that as in the case of Lie groups, uh, what you do is that you take the normal to the space of units and then you endow that with a bracket by identifying the space of sections with some light invariant vector fields. <clears throat> what I do want to stress as the following. First, uh, is that not every Lie algebra comes from a Lie groupoid. Um, the first example of these uh, comes from foliation theory. Uh, it was developed by Molinot. And then later on, at the beginning of the century, um, Kleinik and Fernandes developed a full uh, theory uh, accounting for the integrability of Lie algebras to Lie groupoid. My second point is that there is an infinite dimensional group uh, associated to a Lie group, 
Poet, uh, namely its group of bisections. And this serves as a global counterpart to, to the Lie algebra of sections of uh, your Lie algebra. And this can be made very precise uh, in, under um, appropriate hypothesis. Um, make, well, this group of bisection actually into an infinite dimensional Lie group and whose Lie algebra is the space of sections. And, and finally, being fully aware that these definitions are hard to solo and, and of my scarcity of examples, I want you to have in mind uh, these two types of examples. Uh, this first example is the so-called pair group point in which you start out with a manifold and you have a single arrow going from any point to any other point. And uh, if, you're ma if, you're, if the manifold you started with is symplectic manifold, then you can endow its space of arrows with this form that is multiplicative in, in, in the sense that this form is compatible with the multiplication in a certain sense. And, and the second example is these of the of the cotangent bundle to a Lie group, which after right realization you can realize as an action groupoid. It's a groupoid in which uh, the arrows are labeled by a pairs of point and, and group element, and they go from the point to the point being acted on by the group element. And, and well, of course, uh, the Cotangent model comes endowed with uh, the canonical symplectic structure. And this canonical symplectic structure is, is, is also compatible with the multiplication in this groupoid. Um, and and it, is, it is so in a way that one of these maps here turns into a Poisson map with respect to the linear Poisson structure on this space. And, and this uh, general idea of having a symplectic a structure on, on the space of arrows and going down to a, a, a Poisson structure on its space is the reason because of which this third point appears. Symplectic groupoids are considered to be the global counterparts of Poisson manifolds. And of course, this is in this slide because uh, this comes about uh, because uh, a given Poisson manifold always uh, Produces a certain um, Lie algebra structure on its space on its cotangent bundle. But before going into that, let me just point out uh, first that uh, related to this first point here, uh, the first point in the the first step in the in the quantization scheme uh, before uh, that producing symplectic groupoid, well, that is not always possible. And the second point uh, related to the second one here is that um, um, in the case uh, you have a symplectic uh, Lie uh the space of bisections is not actually the integration of the Poisson Lie algebra, but rather just the subgroup of um, Lagrangian bisections. Okay, but let me just go uh, in more detail about uh, the last remarks. So first, uh, given a Poisson manifold, uh, as I promised, I tell you now how to build a algebra structure on its cotangent bundle. It's uniquely determined by uh, demanding that the bracket of exact forms is exact and is given precisely by the bracket of, of the Poisson structure. And then the, the anchor is defined on exact forms by uh, Hamiltonian vector fields. And, and now more formally, a symplectic form <clears throat> on the space of arrows is going to be called multiplicative if it satisfies this equation, uh, which can be equivalently rephrased as asking that the graph of the multiplication is Lagrangian in this triple product, product endowed with well, symplectic forms with, with signs. And, and it turns out that endowed with a, a symplectic, a multiplicative symplectic form, you can identify the Lie algebra of your Lie group with its cotangent bundle, uh, thus defining a um, unique Poisson structure on its space, on its space of objects. And, and what's neat about groupoids then is that, uh, well, they provide a finite dimensional model or this infinite dimensional uh, Lie theory uh, of which we are particularly interested in uh, the Lie theory of the Poisson Lie algebra on the space of functions of your given Poisson manifold. <laughs> but uh, about the first point again, uh, this comes with a caveat, namely that there are lots of Poisson manifolds that cannot be integrated by symplectic groupoids. And, and this is an example. If you start out with a Poisson, sorry, with the Lie algebra that is compact and semi-simple, 
then you can pick a, a an ad invariant inner product and then consider the sphere inside the tool. And this sphere is going to be a Poisson submanifold. But unfortunately, these are never integrated by symplectic group points. Well, unless um, the Lie algebra you started with is SU2, in which case the sphere is simply the sphere with the area form. Um, but well, this is where the story I wanted to tell you begins. So let's play this game that uh, we are going to consider a groupoid, but instead of um, endowing it with the symplectic structure, we're going to endow it with a compatible uh, contact structure that is contact structure that also comes with the structure of a Lie groupoid over the tangent of its base. And this is a subgroupoid of the full tangent. And in analogy with what I just told you about Poisson manifolds, uh, well, the Lie algebra of this contact groupoids is always isomorphic via the contact structure to um, the first step bundle of this line bundle that I will probably refer to as the contact line bundle. Um, they actually come with a bit of uh, an extra geometric uh, data that made them special among all of the structures. And if you have one of those special structures, algebraic structures on the first gen bundle, then you get a unique bracket on uh, the sections of your line bundle, which is determined by this equation, which should ring a bell because we just saw a, a similar one uh, changing J1 by the exterior differential. Now, uh, these kind of structures are referred to in the literature as uh, Jacobi manifolds. Um, these are local Lie brackets uh, on the spaces of sections of real line bundles. And uh, they are to uh, time dependent mechanics what Poisson uh, manifolds are to usual time independent mechanics. And uh, I am again uh, avoiding getting much into detail about these because I am not going to use them in full generality. Just wanted you to know that um, some manifolds are, are examples of these Jacobi uh, structures, just taking L to be the trivial line bundle where uh, the locality of the bracket follows from the uh, Leibniz identity of course. You may ask why contact groupoids, and and then I will tell you. Well, they might be interesting in their own right, but but for 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 this talk, the things that I will care about is that first they provide more integrations of Poisson manifolds. Uh, this is such an example. Uh, you know that the sphere bundle on the cotangent bundle of any manifold comes endowed with a contact structure, which is given by the restriction of the real form. And it turns out that this structure is multiplicative uh, in the sense that I uh, said before, and that uh, produces this kind of um, contact groupoid. And second, uh, well, they are the objects that were used to describe the prequantization of symplectic groupoids in the work of Kroningen and Drew. Uh, I will say more on this uh, by the end of the talk. Now, as I told you just now, the cool feature of groupoids is that they provide finite dimensional models for infinite dimensional Lie theory. And one recent way of doing so, and if I may so, say so myself, uh, like the beautiful one, was in the work of uh, Krajnik, Fernandes, and Martinez Torres, where they um, studied the so called Poisson manifolds of compact types. Um, of course, one is doomed uh, from the onset if one uh, looks for uh, compact integrations of uh, infinite dimensional Lie algebras. But um, in the case of a Poisson manifold, you can look at its symplectic groupoid and ask for compactness properties. And this is what they did and what they studied. And, and, and well, um, that is a beautiful. Uh, series of papers that I uh, seriously recommend. Uh, what I mean by compact type uh, of a groupoid is uh, one of uh, these three um, properties. Um, the pair target source is a proper map, uh, the source map is a proper, or that the group itself, the groupoid itself is compact. Uh, these collectively are referred to as uh, compact types. And, and a match uh, in their spirit, what we do is uh, we consider uh, contact manifolds, contact groupoids of compact types. And, 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 and let me tell you some of the immediate consequences. 
So first off, these objects are topologically very well behaved. Uh, the obviously defined orbits are closed and embedded manifolds, as opposed to the usual uh, just immersed manifolds. The orbit space is um, an orbifold, uh, as opposed to the more general uh, um, differentiable stack. All of its of all of its, its isotropy groups are compact, and they are even real analytic. Uh, now, on the algebraic side of things, Marius Kranich proved that these groups which have trivial cohomology, um, where this cohomology is is a generalization of the usual group cohomology, and 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 I will now tell you why this is uh, relevant for us. So um, it turns out that the, any B Contact liquid comes endowed with a natural representation on its uh, content line bundle, and that is an assignment that for each arrow gives you a linear map uh, that respects well the source and the target, and also the multiplication uh, in the obvious way. And if you consider the inclusion of of this sequence associated to the contact structure into the analogous sequence of uh, associated to the tangent groupoid, then you have uh, a natural map of exact sequences, and therefore you have a long exact sequence that ultimately tells you that these two guys are isomorphic at a given point, right? And 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 therefore uh, the upshot is that one can always pick representatives of this of this quotient line bundle inside, uh, sorry, tangent to the source fibers, and the multiplication is not defined globally. You can restrict the multiplication to sources, to source fibers, and, and this is a deformorphism. And therefore, uh, one's got such um, deformorphism. So, say the, the, the line bundle associated to the contact structure is actually fully determined by multiplication and what happens on units. And if you replace in the discussion the source by the target map, and everywhere, and and then this right multiplication by left multiplication. Then you have then you have a sequence of, of maps like so, and this is of course what defines the representation. Now, if the line bundle is trivial, or what is the same if if the contact structure is co-orientable, then the representation is nothing but multiplying by a non-zero function, and this can be written as a sign. And uh, well, an exponent of a certain function, and then the relation uh, of the compatibility with the multiplication translates into asking that the sign is a group with homomorphism, and that this R is a group group with homomorphism into R, which, uh, if you remember your your group cohomology, means that R is a one cycle, usually referred to in the literature as the red cycle. Now, with this machinery, you can you can write the multiplicative condition, the multiplicativity condition, uh, in, in in terms of forms instead of uh, distributions, and and well, you see, you get a pretty similar formula to the one we had with uh, the symplectic uh, groupoids, but now the representation appears prominently here, and in fact, one can make sense of all of this uh, thinking of the natural projection as a form with coefficients in, in the line bundle L. <coughs> um, oh, and by the way, uh, just one comment for the experts in the audience. Um, you may have noticed that this formula is a bit different from the one uh, one usually encounters. And, and this is a bit of a digression as to why is that. So uh, you eventually can uh, care just about uh, orientable stuff, because uh, if you take one a contact group with that is not co-orientable, then because of the relation that we just proved, it, it means that the line bundle restricted to the unit, it is trivial, actually. Uh, sorry, it's, it, it cannot be trivialized. Uh, and, and therefore, well, there exists a double cover that desingularizes uh, my, this line bundle. And since this map is a, a cover is a local diffeomorphism, and therefore, one can pull back the group weight structure. One can also pull back the, the contact structure. And uh, because of this uh, same uh, type of relation, one concludes that uh, in this cover, uh, 
well, the contract structure is actually co-orientable. And, and, and do notice that this time around, uh, the, the G hat is not a double cover of G, but instead a fourfold cover accounting for, uh, well, the Z2 times Z2 action, which essentially acts uh, in these two coordinates separately. Um, and, and this construction uh, is good. It preserves integrability in the sense, well, in the obvious sense. Uh, and, and then it also preserves the compactness type but it destroys uh, connectedness. And here is an example. Uh, the, it is also well known that the projectivization of the cotangent bundle of any manifold comes endowed with a non-orient, non-coorientable contact structure. And this non-coorientable contact structure turns out to be uh, multiplicative uh, for this, um, for this uh, projectivization inside of the, uh, projectivization of the dual of the Lie algebra. Uh, but the double cover is this thing. So you see neither G hat nor its source fibers, which are Z2 times G are necessarily connected any longer. Um, so this is why the sign appears because since my source fibers need not be connected, well, the sign might, might jump. Anyway, uh, so what does this all have to do with uh, vanishing of the cohomology? Well, since R is a one cycle, it ought to be trivial. Uh, that means that it satisfies this equation. And this will allow me to choose um, a better candidate for uh, contact structure, for contact uh, form, uh, namely one that does away with the representation part of this thing and leaves, a lot, leaves only the sign, so a constant. And, and, and in fact, using this form, a bit more uh, happens, this better, uh, is that if, if phi is the action, then you see uh, the, the contact structure is going to be invariant under this action. And this translates in general that any form that you take, any contact form that you take is going to be a multiple of uh, its pullback along these maps. But in the case that we pick this formula, they are actually, uh, they differ just by a sign. And then one, one last uh, consequence of this uh, R being trivial is that up to a double cover, in fact, the space of objects is always a Poisson manifold, uh, as opposed to a more general um, copy uh, structure. Uh, one final uh, consequence uh, on the geometric side is that uh, these uh, groupoids are all uh, linearizable around orbits. I, again, will get uh, this again the, by the end of the talk. So the uh, punchline now is that uh, these are the perfect conditions to adopt the argument of Moser and Gray to the multiplicative world. So if you have a compact group weight and a smooth pad of multiplicative contact structures in G, then, uh, well, they are all related by uh, group weight automorphisms. And the way you prove it is, well, suppose that H0 is co-orientable, and then all of the HTs are going to be uh, co-orientable, and then you invoke the master trick, namely, you will assume that your automorphism comes from as the flow of a time dependent uh, vector field. And then you take the special form and then you massage the relation here, which is the form incarnation of this relation uh, to get this equation, in which here RT is the red vector field associated to this form. And this thing is going to have a solution a unique solution inside of uh, the kernel of alpha t. Uh, here I am missing a, a trick. Um, this uh, vector field turns out to be multiplicative because of the choices we made. And uh, since the vector field is multiplicative, then uh, the flows are groupoid automorphisms. And in the case that H0 is not coorientable, then none of the other contact structures in the path is coriandable either. And then you take the four-fold cover and because of the choices we made, we can make, we can use this XT to be say Z2, Z2 equivariant and therefore um, the uh, automorphisms descend. Now this has got um, immediate consequences. So first off, uh, one's got that the strict deformations of compact 
contact voids are trivial. This follows uh, from the theory of Kleinik, Nuno Mestre, and uh, Struhinet, uh, in which they will eventually prove that the strict deformations of compact group voids are trivial. And this is, this is what that means, that if you have a path of leak group voids uh, and you're deforming them, then there exists a path of isomorphisms that take them all uh, to the um, the group weight that you started with, the G0. And then if, if you go ahead and take such a deformation, but now uh, put together a, a contact uh, multiplicative form, then of course, then you're gonna get the same result. You can now pull back all of the contact structures and then you are in the setting of the theorem that I um, just outlined the proof for. Um, also, as a sort of uh, trivial corollary, notice that uh, well, since uh, this uh, sphere, cos sphere bundle, um, is a compact contact uh, groupoid, then well, one can see what happens uh, when one deforms with the structure that is induced on the base, and and as and and doing so, one can get a a a much weaker version of this theorem by Yon Markut uh, says that if you have a compact semi-simple Lie algebra, essentially the only uh, Poisson structure that uh, maybe say the, the Poisson structure that, that I described as a, a Poisson as Poisson as a Poisson submanifold of the linear structure in the middle of the Lie algebra is very rigid. There, there are all of the, all of the other Poisson um, structures near it uh, are actually isotopic, conformally isotopic to it, um, and this is something that comes up as a, like a trivial corollary uh, of our theorem. Uh, of course, with the caveat that it's a much weaker version because we are not taking all of the Poisson structures, but only the ones that are integral by contact group weights. But we get uh, the advantage that we have. Uh, we can relax the hypothesis to just drop the semi-simple, and also, uh, well, we do away with all of the, of the Nash Moser fast convergence techniques that go into the proof of this theorem. Uh, next up, related to uh, prequantization. Um, well, this is the definition of, of a prequantization of a symplectic groupoid. Is a contact groupoid. Uh, that fits in such a, an exact sequence of, of groupoids. And then if S is of compact type, G is going to be of compact type. And if I now have an S that is compact and I have a path of prequantum bundles, then, well, I have an analogous condition that, that all of the induced uh, Poisson structures on the base, well, they're actually iso conformally isotopic uh, via a Casimir to the one that I started and finally, uh, one can adopt the same argument, though mixing it up uh, with the linearization procedure to produce local models around leaves. Um, and such model is going to be comprised of a symplectic manifold, a compactly group, a possibly disconnected Lie algebra as this R factor, and, and, and that admits uh, H as a sub-representation and is of the adjoint and that is tri acts trivially on, on the R factor, then a connected principal bundle and a principal bundle connection that satisfies uh, this sort of uh, quantum condition. And, and what one does with this is that one takes this product and induces it with this form, which turns out to be a contact form. And, and then the action, uh, the diagonal action of G and P and H uh, start by co-adjoint um, is um, contact Hamiltonian and has mom and map, this map. Uh, you see this map is never going to hit zero uh, because this is the dual element to the one in R. Uh, so um, the quotient actually in there is um, a Jacobi structure. And, and one can... Um, integrate this Poisson structure by force um, using this model, uh, which is a usual product in the category of, 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 of um, 
contact manifolds. And this again comes with a G action uh, that acts on each of the components and, and emits uh, the projection into R as a moment map. So one can reduce at zero and get uh, something that is a contact group with uh, integrating the structure that you had here. So the option of this is that if you start out with a proper contact group with and you look at one of its orbits, then its normal space is going to be endowed with uh, such a linear structure. And then the linearization map that you have before can be upgraded uh, to a contact isomorphism. And well, <laughs> much more uh, can be said about all this but I will leave it for some other time. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Thank you very much for your talk. Are there questions? Hi, Camilo. Here's Jonas. Hi. Hi, Hi Jonas. Um, I have a question. The, the whole construction you did with using this this Moser trick and and if I if I go to the simplectization or posonization or whatever, I think this immediately translates right to the classic Moser trick in in symplectic geometry. It does. Uh, there is one thing that you should be careful about. I mean, in in the case in the case of the linearization around this, your game, but in the case of the the of the of the first theorem that I showed you, this one, I'm starting with a compact group weight. So if I do the simplectization, I am I am foiling the compactness, right? Because I'm multiplying by R. So I mean, yeah. you can no longer know that the, 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 that your vector fields are gonna have uh, I know I know this problem, but just just that uh that I understand. And I have another question. You you said that um you relate, I mean, for you, this, this pre-quantization was a contact groupoid covering the symplectic groupoid, right? Right. And you, you said that this pi tau is, is, uh, is Poisson isomorphic to F times pi, right? Right. What is this function F? Well, this function F is the one coming uh, from the triviality of the... Station simply. Uh, it's it's gonna be a Casimir, uh, and it, yeah, like when 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 you write things down, it's gonna be something that is induced from this function from from this uh, Revko cycle. Yes. So they are basically they're uh, isomorphic as Jacobi, but not as Poisson. I mean, depends on f, right? That is exactly true. Yes, they are isomorphic two products by this f. Yeah. But they are like continuously so, right? I mean, you have this this phi t that I that I have here, and that and that Yon Markut has. Well, it, it 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 varies with with your with your t, right? This phi. Yeah. Okay. It starts at the identity and. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. Further questions. Perhaps from out there. Okay, so this doesn't seem to be the case. Let's thank the speaker again.